Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Chatty Kappa. Today, I have a very special guest, and we are going to be talking all about how to be motivated, but also stay motivated. It's very easy to say, oh, I'll leave it for tomorrow, or, you know what, I can't be bothered today, I'll do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow doesn't ever come. Now, we know that we've all been down that road. We know that we've, we've experienced that kind of lack of motivation sometime in our lives. Now, whether you're working in a company, whether you are at home, whether you are an entrepreneur and have your own business, staying motivated is so, so important. Well, today I have Ben, Ben Taylor, and he is... He, you know what, it was a pleasure of meeting him firstly. And I know Ben now for a few years and uh, I'm very, very excited to listen to what he has to say about how to stay motivated and be motivated. So welcome, Ben. Hello. <laughs> I, um, I know that at first um, uh, we were looking at what can we actually talk about, you know, and if I look at you are, how old are you, if I may ask? Uh, well, I'm going to be 28 this year in December. So you are very, you're fairly young, you're in your 20s. Mm -hmm. And I know that being in your 20s comes with a lot of, you know, decision making and knowing, you know, am I doing the right thing? Is that vision that I'm setting, is that, is that the right one for me? Mm -hmm. And I guess from the time you started working, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm 28 this year. Um, I'm a graphic designer by trade, I suppose, if you could call it a trade. <laughs> um, but I work in marketing. Um, so my position at work as a senior marketing exec uh, in Manchester, but I'm originally from Milton Keynes. Um, so a southerner living up north. <laughs> <laughs> and that must have been a change too. Uh, yeah, it was much better weather down south. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. And I guess it took you a while to understand the... the, the, the lingo. All, <laughs> yeah, the lingo, the lingo. Yeah, well, I've picked up little bits here and there now because I've been here for... Well, it'll be coming up to nine years now. Wow. I moved here in 2012. So yeah, next year it'll be nine years. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, now I know that you are working as a graphic designer and you also have your own business. Yeah. Now, where did this start? You know, where did this motivation of having this vision, you know, come from? Because you, you only, you're only 27. Mm -hmm. And um, where did this vision of getting into the being a graphic designer? Because I know many men, they don't like talking about where they started and how they are moving along the way. So I'm very privileged to have you. Yeah, tell us a little bit about where did this, where did this creativity or this love for graphic designing and your business? Um, to be honest, like I've always been pretty creative. Like I've always been interested in drawing and art and stuff. I was never great at the um, the art side of things. Um, but yeah, so I was good at that didn't really enjoy, enjoy it so much I was a bit too much of a perfectionist to be going into fine art and stuff like that um so I ended up leaving school um and I didn't really know what to do uh, and a friend of mine was a graphic designer and I liked what he was doing it was kind of like a bit like art but it had rules to it which I kind of liked I'm a bit, <laughs> a bit of a perfectionist and a bit OCD so um so yeah I thought it looked cool I then studied that college and absolutely loved it um so I decided to go and study which is why I moved to Manchester um so I moved here in 2012 to do my degree in graphic design. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I was coming towards the end of the degree, obviously I loved it. Um, and a friend mentioned something about, uh, well, I've always, I've always wanted to have a business or do something that's slightly different to the nine to five, whether that was, I mean, I had aspirations of being a rapper at one point. <laughs> oh, you need to do some rapping. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that was never going to happen. So um, I didn't really have the content to talk about. Um, but yeah, so I then decided, yeah, I'm just going to do, I wanted to do something sort of different, I guess, to the, to the standard nine to five, Monday to Friday. Um, and a friend of mine sort of brought the idea up about doing clothes and clothing um so yeah so i just ran with that idea really and so what uh, is your business called it's called ugly benning co um so 
the same friend came up with the name. He just, we were messing around and he called me ugly um, as a joke. And then yeah. obviously I was like, ugly, people call me Benny, not Ben. Like, so I was like, ugly Benny, that sounds good. That's um, actually quite catchy. Yeah, quite catchy. And I think it reminded me of ugly Betty. And I don't know, like, I just thought it sounds cool. It's kind of flipped on a, a flip on ugly Betty. So I stuck with it um, and I loved it. So yeah, and then um, I started making clothes didn't really work out so I went into doing more like a freelance graphic design thing working with rappers um to do like album artwork and that sort of thing um it was kind of like my way into the music industry without being a rapper <laughs> but now it's kind of gone full circle and I've gone back to yeah I've gone back to doing clothing again oh that's brilliant and did you find that along the way along this journey of yours has um I know working you got two jobs you're working full-time and you're also running your business which yeah. is brilliant i always tell young people hard work does hard work actually is pretty awesome it doesn't kill anybody as long as you have a balance so what were some of the hurdles you experienced along this way um time yeah i guess i mean we've all got the same 24 hours in a day but time's a tough one and I know you mentioned something about school. You you mentioned you left school, and how was school? Uh, I didn't like school. I wasn't a big fan of school. Like, um, I, I didn't like the routine of it. I didn't really get on very well with many of the students. I was a bit different to everybody else. Um, I went to a grammar school. I never really felt like I fitted in there. Um, I did really well. Like in the end, I got some pretty good grades and stuff. But I don't know. I've always just wanted to be a little bit different, and I didn't. I didn't really see myself going on through sixth form there and doing uh, politics. That's what I did, actually. I went to sixth form for one year and did politics, economics. Oh, my God. They, the, next, in ethics. <laughs> the next PM. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. So I did I did yeah, PPE, basically, um, and I hated it. I'm not even going to lie. I hated it. Um, and that's why I decided to leave and to pursue something that I enjoyed. I thought even if I'm not going to make a huge amount of money from it, I would rather, because I could have gone on to politics and made some good money and stuff, but I thought I'd rather do something that made me happy and earn slightly less. But yeah, actually, that's an important thing to yeah. be happy. And it kind of worked out. Like I, I do okay. So. Yeah. And and what are some of? I know you said time was one of your hurdles. What are some of the hurdles that you have experienced? You know, from the time you've left school, went to uni. I mean, I've had my ups and downs with my mental health. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's just a creative people thing, where creative people are all a bit crazy, I guess. Um, and when you do experience, word. you know, it's it's so brave of you, firstly, to actually mention this, because not many people, you know, lots of people actually suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. And you know the, the type of work I do. So many people, they wait until they really crack before actually taking action. Yeah. And how did you actually overcome this, you know, the mental health aspect of, of life? Well, you helped. <laughs> you helped. <laughs> um, obviously, that's why how we met each other really was because of that. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, my work really helps because I love it. Well, I have a love hate relationship with it, really. Like I love to do it, but it drives me insane sometimes. Um, but yes, yeah, so well, I, I mean, my work really helps. Um, and yeah, I think tools that you've taught me as well. Um, I think it's just, it's mad. Like some people are ashamed to talk about it. Uh, talking about it actually probably helped me more than anything. Um, it actually triggered you to, uh, to, to take that first step and get help. I've always been pretty open. Like sometimes I'm a bit of an oversharer. Like I tell people, <laughs> like, whether it's my relationships or whether it's like just my personal life, I tend to tell everybody about it. And I remember telling you, only talk to people that can help you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I seem to see the best in everybody. So I think like, I think everybody can help um, in some way, shape or form, whether it's good advice or bad advice, you learn something from it, I suppose. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And did you find that being an oversharer, did you find that could be a distraction from your goals? I mean, not maybe being an oversharer probably didn't stop me from achieving my goals, but I think just my mental health in general stopped me from or it hasn't stopped me obviously but it's just um this hurdles i guess 
Yeah, but you know what? You are doing amazingly at jumping over those hurdles. You just get you the know, odd road bump. <laughs> well, you know what? Life is all about those little ups and downs. But when you, I just told my daughter this. I told her that life is all about ups and downs. But when you're down there, if you've got the tools, use it, you get back up quicker. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's life. It's a different case where you'd go down and you don't know what to do. And you go down more and more. You go spiraling down. And you don't know how to get back up again. But yeah. hey, you are doing brilliantly. So I'm very proud of you. I, I believed in you 110%. And you know that. Um, still talking about there's good days and bad days. Um, but obviously, it's kind of just knowing that the bad days will, will end and the good days are coming. So And obviously, it's also you get bad days fine in between. I'm a therapist and I have some bad days. <laughs> <laughs> And when I have some bad days, believe you me, everybody else in my house have bad days too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's so, you know just what? true. We all have bad days. So that's all about being, be, you know, being a human being. Now, um, I'm I'm so glad that you you actually have touched on you know seeking help and going through therapy mm -hmm. because you know that knowing what tools to use helps you to get to where you need to be quicker. Yeah. Now, do you think it's important investing in yourself? Oh, 100%. Why? Why 100%, is it important? I mean, investing in yourself in, in an, for a num not just financially, but just like making sure you spend the right amount of time on yourself as well. Look after yourself. Um, I mean, I go to the gym. I'm obsessed with the gym. Like I go to the gym five, six times a week. Um, so, I mean, you in, that's, that costs money, but also it takes time. So you have to make sure you invest that time in yourself. Um one thing I'm really bad at is keeping up with my meditation, but that helps. Um, and if you invest that time, you see the benefits. Um, and investing in yourself financially, I mean, it's like you, you are your, you're the most important person in your life at the end of the day. And I and wonder you, where you learned that from. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't even like one thing for me is I want to help people. Um, I want to educate people in graphic design and photography and things like that that's what i want to do eventually um, and you were saying you want to work with lots of young people yeah, and you want people, to get get people out of the off of the streets like stop doing knife crime and selling drugs and uh, like you can't help somebody else unless you you've helped yourself first if if you're not in a good place then you can't expect to help other people so absolutely absolutely you know what you know you hit it on the head uh, that's absolutely true and um I think, I think there's so many young people out there that need to be inspired by people like you. So whatever you're doing, just carry on doing it because your motivation can actually motivate other people. Now, mm -hmm. talking about motivation, how do, you, how do you stay motivated on your vision and your goals? I struggle. Like, <laughs> um, I, I try and visualize it in steps. So I have, I have obviously a, what I'd call an end goal. Even though I don't really want to call it my end goal, because I always hope there's something after that. Um, but then break it down into into smaller steps. So say like I have a, a one year plan, a five year plan, a ten year plan, and a twenty year plan. Like mm -hmm. things I want to do within that time. So I guess it's just a case of sometimes you'll have days where you're like, I don't want to do this, and that's fine. Like some days you just need to take some time to yourself, mm -hmm. and maybe that'll help motivate you the next day. You don't want to burn out. Um, Absolutely, yeah if you maybe like today for example i'm really not feeling doing any work this evening i've been at work all day i'm tired and once we get off this call i'm just going to get a takeaway and get and to then bed you had to share the the the, uh, the uh, an ear the part of your evening with me thank you so yeah. much <laughs> and then so i will get a takeaway and get into bed and watch a film and then that means tomorrow i'm going to be ready for, for the next thing and i guess it just gives me a time to reflect on on what i want um and think about that end goal and at the end of the day i like to take sort of 10 15 minutes just to think mm -hmm what went well today, what's going to go well tomorrow, what to be grateful for. And then that kind of motivates me to get up the next day and, and go for it again. Uh, that make sense? I don't know if I kind of jumbled my words a little bit there, but no, 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 that you made perfectly good sense. Um, so when you, when you say that you needed, you know, you take time out, self care. Mm -hmm. Why, why do you think this is important for mental health? I never, health, used, to but also I never used to do it ever. I kind of just, would burn out like very quickly and the more times you burn out the harder it is to come back from it um i'd work like i'd be at university i'd be working i'd be going out with my mates in the night time 
drinking and being silly and then that tires you out and then I'd be working on my freelance stuff or the business and then I'd see my girlfriend and I was just doing so much stuff that I'd done and I wasn't going to the gym I wasn't taking time to read or or to meditate or even just to sit in silence mm -hmm. for 10 minutes. I wasn't doing that so I ended up becoming like quite mentally unwell like yeah. I've always been quite physically touch wood I've always been lucky enough that I've been quite physically healthy and well but um mentally I was getting really really unwell like mm -hmm. um, I'm starting to struggle with my thoughts and overthinking um so I think it's so important to take that time just to to look after yourself because at the end of the day you can there's, there's a lot of people that talk about you know like um working hard you can't you don't sleep keep going keep going keep going but actually like you're just going to burn out and make yourself sick and then you're going to be no good to anybody let alone yourself uh, Absolutely. you're not going to reach that 10 20 year goal <laughs> because you're gonna make you don't have any illness. You know, look at Steve Jobs. You know, just when he brought his company to where he needed to be, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, the stress of getting there, he passed away. You know, illnesses come into the body when when your mental health is not, um, when your mind is not healthy, mm -hmm. and and that is. He had a really good quote on his um, deathbed. He there's quite a lengthy quote that he said. Where he basically just said i've spent all these years building something and and what was it worth like because now i'm gonna die a lonely man like because he didn't have any I'm, i think correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think he had any family around him i don't think he ever had a wife or children because he spent so much time on his work and he just said what what was the point in all of this like really so i, I mean he was an incredibly successful man and he's done some amazing things but yeah. unfortunately he's not around around to see the yeah, you know what, uh, success, uh, it, unfortunately, if you're not around to appreciate your success, yes, you leave a legacy, yes, your family benefits, but at the end of the day, you know, you want to see the fruits, you know, you want to see mm. what you've sowed and you want to, you know, you want to reap the benefits of it. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's the whole point, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, definitely, definitely. You know what, um, I always say that you put yourself first and you romance yourself. And I write, I, I speak about this a lot in my book and where you need to spend time with yourself. If you can't love yourself and you can't romance yourself, how are you going to take, how are you going to show love to somebody else? You know, how are you going to keep a, uh, how are you going to have a family and so on? So it's very important to make sure self romance and uh, romancing oneself is very, very vital and essential. Now, <laughs> How do you juggle your time? And I know, and I know you mentioned that time is a hurdle. How do you juggle your time between your business and your full-time job as a graphic designer? Um, well, I'm I'm kind of fortunate that my job is not shift work or anything, so I know when I'm in work, like every week. So it's quite easy for me to schedule things around it. Like I'm in work from half eight to half five, Monday to Friday, and that that's it. Like any other time I've got is my time because um, I go to the gym while I'm at work. So I, I get all of my chores essentially done in the daytime. So anytime I have in the evening or the weekends is mine. Um, so like I said, so I'm, I'm pretty good at structuring my weeks. Like I have to-do lists and vision boards and things like that. So um, I, I, the way I juggle it, I guess, is some days in the week, for example, tonight, I'm not going to do anything. But that means tomorrow when I finish work, that means I'm going to have to go twice as hard <laughs> because I, I'm going to take tonight off. Mm -hmm. So I don't really structure it like every week. So I'm like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to work and I'm going to have Thursday off. I don't structure it like that. It's kind of, guess, like how I'm feeling on that day. Yeah. Um, like today I'm tired, so I'm going to chill. <laughs> and, also, and also having that flexibility, being your own boss means you have that flexibility too. Exactly. And the amount of work you put in uh, and the time that you want to take out is so, you know, it's naturally important. Mm -hmm. um, I know uh, you did mention Vision Board and I know that was mm -hmm. one of the things we started while yeah, you yeah. were under, with, with, you know, in therapy. Now, how is that benefiting you and how does that help you to stay motivated and be succinct with your goals and your vision? Well, I have to admit I'm guilty of not filling it up that much recently. Well, <laughs> you better get some time. And <laughs> <laughs> What I do is I tend to, like, I spend a lot of time on Instagram because I'm very visual and I like Pinterest and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I've got a lot of screenshots on my phone 
Um, I even have a fake Instagram account that I just upload everything to. Um, so it, while I'm out, I have kind of like a mobile uh, vision board on that Instagram. Um, but it is really, really important to have it in real life um, so that you look at it every morning. It's actually just over here in the... In the I can see on it. A, on a big, um, big cork board. But um, yeah, it needs to be filled up a little bit more. But it's just really good because you, you wake up... Um, you see what you want at that day and you visualize it and then you know like i'm a big believer in the secret um by Rhonda Byrne, mm -hmm. um, and i think i've actually got a check on my on my uh, vision board that i downloaded from the secrets website and i put like how much money i want to have by what date and it just gives you a, i guess it gives you something to aim for um but also it holds, think it about yeah you when you think about it you, it you put in it out into the universe and and your thoughts become things at the end of the day. So, you and if you don't think about it, that means it will never become part of your goals because you haven't even thought about the idea. You have to be obsessed with it, really. Yeah. If you and really even, want it. Even if you like, even one percent doubt yourself, it's the one percent that our mind actually latches onto. Mm -hmm. We set on default like that. Yeah. Now, what is the big dream and what are your plans uh, uh, for the future and how, what's your steps on making it a reality? What's your big dream? Tell us. The big dream is um, to have a successful brand. Um, and then from that, the money that I make from that, I want to reinvest into a second business, um, which is going to be like an educational platform. So Ugly Benny Co is the business at the moment, the clothing and the design. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then whatever money I make from that at the end of the day, once I've made a splash in yeah. the scene, so to speak, I want to then reinvest that money into an educational platform um, and like a scholarship almost for, for people that want to get creative, but also for children that are disadvantaged or come from disadvantaged backgrounds or are in trouble with the police or, um, or are going to get in trouble with the, the street life. So, and then teach them graphic design and, and creative subjects and have people teach them as well, other things like musicians. And, and what, a big thing for me is at school, like I said previously, like I was going to do philosophy and things like that. Um, no one really told me that I could be a creative and make money from it as well. Like it was kind of like you did art on a Wednesday afternoon and that was just, yeah. So I want to encourage people and say like, look, you can go into design or you can go into fashion and you can it's a realistic dream and you can make money from it and you can be successful doing it it's not just like you don't have to just be an academic and do maths or english or because i know there's a lot of people out there that struggle with those things and i was one of them um but you didn't get told at school that you could go and do something creative so i want to actually yeah that's the big dream i guess the big dream eventually is to yeah i want to make money myself i want to have a successful brand but i also then just want to give back and inspire other people to do the same thing you know what, having that goal and having that purpose, you will definitely achieve that because, you know, uh, most uh, most successful people, they become philanthropists. You know, mm -hmm. they want to they want to make the world better. And yeah. um, and if you have that in mind, it will definitely happen. Put that mm -hmm. in your vision board. I want you to add one more thing to your vision board. Mm -hmm. I want you to start adding another bit to your vision board. It's called the achievement board. And as you start to achieve all the things that you put on your vision board, put it on a post stick and slap it onto the achievement board. And you will notice the proudness that you feel inside you when you write something that you've achieved and you put it on that board. And, and you tend to start to motivate yourself even quicker to get to the next one and slap it on the achievement board. Mm. Start doing that and you'll see how much more quicker you'll start to accelerate yourself. Yeah, because you have to kind of look back on what you've done well and congratulate yourself as and well. Celebrate, yeah. How do you celebrate when you've done a, a great achievement? Well, normally with a beer. <laughs> 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 but, but, but obviously, you know, I'm not, I'm trying to I'm trying to curb that at the moment. Hey, what word are you using? What's that? Sorry. What word are you using? T R Y. Oh yeah, I shouldn't be using that. But yeah. I, I'm, I'm working. I'm working on on cutting the the drink out because I think you can be a, a great person if you if you cut out some of the negative vices that you have in your life. Um, 
So oh, yeah, how does that, how does that celebrate by, by, by having a beer? But yeah, I, I, tonight I'll probably celebrate this conversation by having a takeaway instead. <laughs> oh, there you go, there you go. Um, you got, you've got to treat yourself. Yeah, definitely. Talking about addictions and things like that, I know that so many successful people, uh, because of not feeling, you know, they can be, they can have all the money. Look at all the, look at all the singers that have passed. You know, that committed suicide or, or mm -hmm. you know, passed away. People like Michael Jackson, Amy Winehouse, and, and uh, you know, and the list goes on. You know, Whitney Houston, all of them, mm -hmm. and. With that success, you know, how how important it is to make sure that, you know, there's no addictions or, you know, you don't get addicted to something else. you got to be addicted to, to your work or, your, or something positive or the gym or, or be addicted. Because, I mean, some people just have addictive personalities. I'm one of them people. Um, and I think I've, I really, I watch a lot of TED Talks and things about addiction. Um, and it's something you live with for your life. You can't, you can't get rid of it. You're an, if you've got an addictive personality, it's part of the, your brain makeup. Yeah. But, um, but just try and get addicted to the positive things and not, not slip into the alcohol and drugs and, and whatever else that causes you negative, uh, causes um, negative problems in your life. I'm giving you a challenge now. I don't want you to use the, the word addiction. Mm-hmm. Remove it from your dictionary. <laughs> and <Addiction. we're> just, <laughs> yeah, remove, remove it from your dictionary. And you know what? Um, we don't don't label yourself with that because you'd find that um, you can change it around. Because some of your some of the things that some of the things that you're passionate about, you make it a reality because of that passion. So yeah. change it. Change the addiction to passion. You're yeah. a passionate person and you're very passionate about certain things. Yeah. And, and and you'd use the the good, you know, the things that, that work well for you to actually be a stepping stone to the next success, isn't it? Yeah. Now, yeah. I know that, um, you know, business and being an entrepreneur is all about growth. Where can my community how can they get in touch with you and where can they find you instagram mainly okay. uh, ugly benny co um that's the same on facebook um and my website is ugly co um and if you go onto my ugly benny co profile on instagram that has a link to my personal profile which um, I post some of the freelance work that I do that's nothing to do with the brand yeah. um, or some old stuff or I don't tend to post pictures of me um, I don't really use social media for that reason mm -hmm. I've, actually I don't really like social media to be honest I think it's a bit to toxic but, <laughs> Can but you? Yeah. it's a great tool um, if you've got a business or so yeah Ugly Benny Co It's Not Ugly is the other one or my website, uglybenny.co. Uh, that's where, if you want to buy any clothes, you can go there. <laughs> oh, that'll be great. I want to get something for my son. Um, and I love I love the whole idea behind um, Ugly ben, Benny. Ugly Benny, U-G-L-Y-B-E-N-N-Y. Brilliant. You know what, Ben? Thank you so much for coming and joining us. And I know that your energy and your passion is definitely going to inspire other people. Any oh, last words? of inspiration of inspiration just keep your head down work hard be happy look after yourself <laughs> romance yourself romance yourself indeed and now and again take the night off and actually get a takeaway yeah oh i'm getting a takeaway i'm <laughs> getting a veggie burger because i'm vegetarian so <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you could have come and popped over here for dinner hey if you went oh, that would have been nice a bit of a journey from manchester but yeah <laughs> i know well thank you so much and it's been a pleasure chatting to you and uh, yeah well the whole idea of the chatty cuppa is all about inspiring and rewiring that inner fire within us mm -hmm. and i think ben has done that for us thank you so much ben and catch him on all of his social media and uh, yeah get connected i love just connecting people and collaborating with them yeah get in touch i'll be happy to talk to anybody brilliant um.